And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. There are a lot of two-player games, abstract strategy games that I like and use, and one of the ones I like the best is Kamisato. You say, what? You just gave your opinion? You haven't even showed us the game yet. Well, here's the deal. Uh, this is a new version of Kamisato. It's a smaller... The first version was a very big box. You can still get the bigger version in some places. But this is a smaller, compact version, and I got it, and I liked it. I already liked the game, and I thought, hey, I'll do a review of it. Um, one of the things... Uh, I played a lot of different games. I think, you know, sometimes people say, how many times have you played the game before you reviewed it? Well, with Kamisato, I can easily say I've played the game over 100 times. Now, one, that's because it's short, and two, it's because I've used it in class, and three, I really need to show this to you before I talk any more about it. Here's the board which has two sides. They're, they're functionally identical, except this side is just has nothing on it, which actually looks a little bit more garish than the other side, which has the Chinese lettering on it. In a simple game, each player is going to take pieces, and I'm telling you, these are fantastic pieces. They're the little castles, I mean they're 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 very sturdy, they have felt on the bottom. It just has a really high class production. And you're gonna put each of these pieces. You're going to put them on the color that is shown on the character on that piece. So there's one side set up, and here's the other side. It's a very quick game to set up, but that's one of the uh, attractions of the game is just how fast you can play. Now, in a simple game, one player is going to go first, and they can move any piece they want. Now, every piece moves the exact same way. When a piece moves, it can move as far as you want forward or diagonally forward. It can never move sideways or backwards. So, let's say I move this piece here. I move up here to the purple piece, to the purple space, I mean. That means now my opponent must move their purple piece. So they move over here to the green, which allows me to move my green one again. He moves to the orange. Orange moves to pink. Pink moves to purple. Purple slides in here and wins the game. Because all you have to do to win the game is to get one of your pieces into your opponent's row. It's a very easy game. Now it's possible, let's say, that one of my pieces is, lands on the purple, and now his purple piece must move and his purple piece cannot move. Then we simply look and say, okay, the purple's on yellow, so now yellow moves. And that's how you play. Now that's the basic game. Now you can upgrade this, you can upgrade it three times actually, to a standard game and then a long game and then an epic game, or I'm sorry, or epic and marathon, whatever. And basically the way that works is when you get a piece to the other side, let's say that person got the purple piece, they then place one of these dragon's teeth into the top of that. And we line up again, although this time whoever won lines up all their pieces first. And you can line up and put them on any color you want to start. And then we play again. This piece now is considered a sumo piece. It cannot move as far as a regular piece can go. It can only go five spaces forward, which means it can't get all the way across the road, which weakens it greatly. However, when it's in front of an opponent's piece, it can actually push that piece. You can't push diagonally, just straight forward. And if it lands on your opponent's row, you get three points. Otherwise, you get one point for each of these you get, and the first person to get to a certain number of points is the winner. That's a standard game. Or you can play that when the, in the next level, that the sumos can then be upgraded to the next kind of piece. And those pieces can move only three spaces, but they can push sumos, and they can push two pieces. Or then you can play the marathon game where you upgrade them even more. Now they have three dragon's teeth in them. And they can only move one space each. But of course, if you get it to your opponent's side, then you win. So that's how to play the longer versions, but essentially you'll find yourself most time just playing a quick one-up match to see who can get one piece to the other side first. Well, there you have it. It's very simple. Uh, I mostly play the short games back and forth. Sometimes I'll play the longer games, but it's just very, it's very straightforward. You move, I have to move, and what follows you. And looking forward moves helps out a lot. You say, okay, if I move here, he'll have to move that piece which gives them those options, and then what do I do next? And there's a lot of forward thinking. You can win this game in a few moves. You can, it could take a long time, but most games of the short one will take 10 minutes at the most. 
uh, probably two or three sometimes if you both play quickly. I like it. High quality pieces, easy to play. I've taught this game to probably a hundred different people and all of them have really enjoyed it. I've yet to meet someone who doesn't like it uh, unless they do terribly at it. But it, it rewards good strategy. Uh, Kami Sato. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com. <laughs>